Hello and welcome to this season review for Southampton. It's been a very long season. We've had a lot of highs and a lot of lows and we left off with the biggest high we could hope for and that is a playoff final win. We are in the Premier League now and thank God for that because I do not want to watch Championship football ever again. We're going to talk about a few things. Uh, we'll go through like player ratings for the season. We'll go through um, some things about Russell Martin, blah, blah, blah. And we'll, look, we'll talk about some um, transfer rumours and potential signing of obviously some of the lone players that were here who I would want to sign, who I wouldn't want to sign, etc. All right, so we're going to talk about Russell Martin first because obviously he had a lot of criticism this season. Um, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I always said back the man. Um, obviously, for, for me, especially this season, I was saying top four would be a good season. And then, you know, playoffs are roll of dice, whether we win or don't. Um, obviously, we finished in the top four and we won the playoffs, which is perfect. But I think Russell Martin has done a lot more than people just realize. You know, there's a lot more to football than just results on a pitch. I mean, there's an identity. I mean, when was the last time we had an identity? You could go into a game going, well, this is how we're going to play. I know how we're going to play. And exactly that. You know, under Ralph, we had a little bit. And then due to just complete lack of transfers, lack of improvement to the squad, it just slowly turned into an absolute piece of shit. And then Nathan Jones didn't exactly help that. And then Ruben Sellers didn't help that either. So it's been a while since we had a true identity like a Komen or a, or a Pochettino sort of team. And Russell Martin, definitely, one thing you can 100% praise him on is the philosophy was there. He, he set up the team how he wanted to play. And he stuck with it regardless of how it was going. And you got to praise that, really. you got to respect it. But one thing that people, I think, underestimate the was difficult for Russell Martin is he's coming to a club that's just slowly trickled down the table. You know, the Koeman era was there. Top six finishes, you know, in Europe. We had a cup final under Claude Puel. And it just sort of went down, didn't it? It just sort of kept going down, 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 down. We survived one season um, under Mark Hughes, the saviour, and then it just continued, right? Obviously, Ralph, Ralph Arsenal did what he could. I think he was a good manager, but lacked resources heavily and was kind of cucked by um, the board and the ownership for not investing in him. And we went down with an embarrassing total of 25 points, which is unacceptable. One of the worst totals in recent history. We lost Ward Prowse, our captain. We lost Lavia, who was a star player uh, in the season. We lost a few other players who were first team players. The team was a mess. Had no identity, had no style of play, lost star, star players. Obviously had a dreadful season uh, previously. The fans weren't exactly happy. Um, they were questioning the ownership as well, Sports Republic. They were questioning them about the hiring of Nathan Jones, which is fair enough. Um, about the signings, about buying too many young players and all these sort of things. And Russell Martin came into this club with basically nothing going well for us at all, in the slightest. And what he's done, as you can see with sort of the, how the players talk about him especially, is that they really love him. Really that simple. He is clearly a good man manager. There's a lot of managers these days that lose the dressing room very quickly. Um, and it's not always their fault sometimes the players are just a bunch of brats a bunch of idiots i mean there's a lot of clubs that have that issue where sort of player power goes too far but russell martin is definitely good at man management i mean a lot of the times he's a very honest person you can watch his interviews and his um, post-match interviews after a loss or after a poor performance and he just says it how it is it wasn't good enough we didn't have this or that and we will look to improve it which is something you can respect i mean there's a lot of managers that will sort of just not really be honest and just sort of a little bit deluded in their own mind, like, oh no, we played well, we played excellent, but blah, 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 and you're just thinking, did you? Did you really? And I think Russell Martin's a very honest manager, which is something I appreciate. But also, he's obviously instilled the, the style of play that he wanted. He instilled a, an identity into the team, and what a different identity it was. I mean, I've never had Southampton this much position in my life. I've never seen it before. I couldn't quite believe it. That first game against Sheffield Wednesday, I was just like, this is not the same team. And obviously, we've had our highs and lows. We've had some batterings, um, a few of them. But we also went on that un unbeaten 25 run, which is brilliant. Um, we sort of had a little bit of a wobble after we lost to Bristol City. But eventually, we got back into the right frame of mind, back into form in the perfect time for the playoffs, and obviously now we're in the Premier League. So I'm really happy with Russell Martin. Um, even if we didn't win the playoff final, I would have been like, he has to stay regardless. 
I mean, he hasn't exactly been able to rebuild the team in his image in terms of transfers. You know, he's had a lot of loan transfers because obviously FFP and the championships are a lot different to the Premier League. And obviously we lost a lot of our star players, a lot of our key players. And we have a lot of positions of the team that need improvement. And now we're in the Premier League, we can really see massive overhaul in the squad. I mean, there's a lot of deadwood still. We got rid of a lot last season. There's still a ton left. And it's just a matter of getting them out and getting new, new blood in because a lot of the players, you know, these players that we've signed that are young, you know, the Maras, the Sulemanas and all that sort of stuff where you can tell they have potential, but it's just not worked. Something's not clicked. Whether they just joined at the worst time, obviously last season was a dreadful season. Maybe if they had joined this season, they had a bit more confidence in themselves and maybe it would have been different, but we just got to get rid of those sort of players as much as it breaks my heart. We've got to get rid of those players that you just, they just aren't going to do a job. If they don't do a job in the championship, how are they going to do a job in the Premier League, right? So we need to reinvest, and I do believe it's going to be um, very interesting transmitter for us. I think there's going to be a lot of overhauls to the squad. There's a lot of positions we desperately need, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But overall, in terms of Russell Martin's management, it's a thumbs up from me. Um, obviously, he's had his flaws, he's, he's had his issues, but he's come right at the right time, and he's won us promotion, so you've got to respect him for that. And I think a lot of criticism was laid on him which was very unnecessary I mean even if we didn't get promoted this season I would not blame Russell Martin in the slightest I mean he gave us a good chance at the end of the day what you can criticize Russell Martin for is the system right and the management of players his management of players have been great I mean I think we can all agree on that obviously people have criticized his system oh, we're just passing it backwards and sideways which was the same as last year apparently even though we're one of the top scorers in the league but it is what it is but as I was saying, you know, you criticize a, a manager for a system, right? And against Cardiff, this is a prime example, a prime example. Against Cardiff, should be up 5-0 at halftime, right? We're not, we lose, right? That, that happens, right? It is what it is. You can't blame those sort of losses on Russell Martin. You can't blame the Middlesbrough draw against Russell Martin. You can't blame the Ipswich loss against Russell Martin. We had the chances in those games to finish the game. Didn't take them, defense collapsed. At the end of the day, you can only do so much. I mean, if, you're, if your set of backs are being idiots, if your strikers are missing sitters, not much you can do. You, there's literally not much you can do. If Che Adams doesn't want to score from six yards, he doesn't want to score from six yards. If we can't defend our box with any sort of quality, we can't defend our box with any sort of quality. And it's not as if our defensive um, frailties are something new. I mean, it's been like this for years. I mean, we've conceded absolute howlers, howlers over the years. And it didn't exactly leave us this season. The free of the back helped solidify defensively. We, we weren't as much of a threat going forward. But we didn't need to be in terms of the playoffs. We didn't need to be a sort of 30 shots against five sort of team, 80% shot. We didn't need to do that to get through. So that's all good, really. I don't know whether he's going to do a three at the back or go back to a four in the Premier League. Who knows? I guess that would depend on who is signed, basically. But that's basically what I want to say about Russ Martin. I think the criticisms he's had is a bit um, unfair. I think he's done an excellent job. I think he's done better than I expected him to do. And I'm genuinely excited to see how he tackles the Premier League. I feel like he's a young manager and he's doing great already. He's got a good style of play, a good identity, and he's really hard with it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm excited. I love the Premier League. Well, I love the Premier League for the fact it's the highest quality league in England, but... I mean, there's a lot of uh, a lot of issues with English uh, football. Um, we won't name them, the refs. Um, but yeah, all VARs. I'm not looking forward to VAR, but it is what it is. But that's what I want to say about Russell Martin. We're going to move on to player ratings now. Uh, we're just going to go through the squad and rating out of 10 and then say something about them, I guess. All right, on to the player ratings. We're just going to go from... You know, all the keepers, to all the defenders, to all the midfielders, to all the attack, okay? So, Bazudu, Big Gav! Okay, Mr. Worst Keeper in the League, apparently. Um, Obviously, I'm a big Bazunu defender. Well, I mean, everyone hates him for some reason. Um, Now, Bazunu is he the best keeper in the league? No. Is he the worst? No. Is he fantastic? No. But he's decent, he's young, he's got potential. I think a lot of the criticisms he's had this season has been unfair. I mean, he's he obviously there's been goals he should have saved. Of course there is. Every keeper has those issues. Uh, more often than not, he should have saved some. Yes, of course. But I think a lot of the goals, if you really look back and look at a majority of the goals we concede, the defending's awful. 
I mean, obviously, you sort of want your keeper to save the day sort of stuff. It's a one-on-one. -on -one, the defense has been poor. Keeper saves the day. Or he has one of those matches where he just makes six or seven saves. It gets us a point. It gets us three points. Bazuna isn't that type of keeper. I think we all know that. He's not the type of keeper who's going to win you a game. He's not going to gain you a point out of just being incredible. He's just decent. Maybe in the future, when he develops a bit more, um, he could become that keeper. But in reality, I gave him a six out of ten because it was just... Okay, I mean 6 out of 10 for me in this list is sort of he was okay I'll list reasons why I think he was okay whether it was you know his fault whether he wasn't given enough game time or whatnot But I think Bizuna was just a 6. I mean he was just okay Could have been better could have been worse But it is what it is and obviously with his injury leaves a big question in the transfer window What we're gonna do with that. I'll talk about that later, but moving on to the next keeper Lumla It's just a 6 because he just didn't really do anything. Like, he played, what, three cup games or two cup games or how many it was? Maybe four or five? I can't remember. I mean, he's the second choice, but then when it became the chance to become the first choice, they said, nah, fuck off, you're still second choice, which is a bit, I don't know, it was a bit confusing as to, like, if you were going to make McCarthy your second choice, why would he not play in the cup games? But it is what it is. Lumley gets a 6 out of 10 for just not playing, really. McCarthy gets a 7 out of 10. Um, now, obviously, people think McCarthy's, you know, the greatest thing ever created now um, because, obviously... Uh, how he played in the end of the season. But for me, I mean, McCarthy was good in some aspects, bad in other aspects, but obviously that's every player, you know, you have pros and cons. McCarthy, what I would, what I really noticed is how he handled corners, how he handled set pieces, how he handled crosses. Now, obviously, he didn't get every single one right, but a majority of the time he did come out and do good punches to sort of clear the danger, which I appreciated. Obviously, with his feet, we all know he's dodgy, so we don't really need to bother about that. He's not a distribution keeper. He's not going to bloody ping it around for fun, but he did his job good enough. He did a good enough job um, to keep a few clean sheets. He, he saved what he had to, really. I mean, off memory, there's not many goals that he conceded that I would say he should have saved. And there's not many goals he... There's not many saves that he made that I went, what the f***? How did he do that? You know, it was just sort of he did what he could and he did all right. So I gave him a 7 out of 10 because he came into the team. We're a little bit wobbly. Obviously, Bazunu's now out for the season and he did well. Moving on to defense, Kyle Walker-Peters, the best right back in the league. I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. I think there's patches where he just sort of lost his way. I think in that back three is his perfect role. Obviously, I think he's a good defensive fullback as well, but attacking-wise, he's absolutely class, right? We all know that. And I do think that in some games um, earlier on the season, we had the back four. I just feel like sometimes attacking-wise, he went too far and it just sort of exposed us. And that back three, uh, it fitted perfectly and he was excellent. So 8 out of 10, brilliant. 3, 6 out of 10, didn't really do anything. Uh, got sent off against Ipswich, that's about it. Uh, but other than that, I mean, he didn't have much game time. You can't say, oh, you shit. He didn't have enough game time to really prove otherwise. He did okay when he came in, so 6 out of 10. Steven, 7 out of 10. I mean, he missed half the season. When he came into the team, he was a difference maker, especially in that back three. I mean, he got unwarranted criticism as well. I mean, the people were saying, oh, he's just trying to shoehorn Stevens in when Stevens had good games. <laughs> like, if you're shoehorning someone in who's supposedly shit, I mean, at least, the, at least they play shit, right? So you can be like, oh, he played shit, why are you playing him? And Stevens didn't really have bad games, even in the back four, right? He was fine. And now, obviously, in the back three, he's even better because you can sort of step into midfield, which is excellent. But, I mean, Stevens said, I tend to, if he was, wasn't was injured for as long, potentially would have done better. But it is what it is. Yanny B. What a redemption story. What a redemption story. I was a big Yanny B hater. Go Yanny B. Especially after what he said when he joined Villa. It was pretty disrespectful to the club. You didn't even join there permanently. You're on loan and you're saying, oh, it's great to finally join a big club. What are you doing? What are you saying? So, Yanny B, the redemption story of dreams. Obviously, I was surprised he stayed um, when we got relegated. I mean, he talked big when he went to Villa. So, I thought, oh, now we're in championship. He's going to go on, which is fine or whatever. But he stayed and he did well. He was excellent. Him and Harwood were class. We'll talk about Harwood now. Oh, Ben Rack was an 8 out of 10 before I forget. Harwood, class. I mean, signed permanently. Absolutely brilliant. 20 million well spent, in my opinion. A young future captain, as people say. He was excellent as well, just like Yanny B. Some very, very crucial blocks. Crucial bit of defending, especially that player final. The block he made to the shot. I mean, I, I thought it was a certain goal, and he blocked it brilliantly. So Harwood gets an out of 10. Excellent, and I'm glad to see his sign. I'm glad to see him next season. Moving on to Manning, 6 out of 10. I think defensively, he is dodgy. I think in the last sort of 10 games, he started to improve. He sort of went out of the squad for three, four, five games, completely didn't play. Then he sort of came back in and he was a lot better. Um, I think in that back three, he will be a lot better in the Premier League though. Maybe not, so I'm thinking we need a left back. But um, yeah, six out of 10, he was good enough, 
right? He did his job decently, but defensively was very fragile sometimes. And I've said it many times, he just has hyper defensive mode or lazy defensive mode. And by what I mean by that, he has no balance. I mean, it's either I'm pressing the shit out of this guy, regardless, I'll take him out if I have to, or I'm not pressing anyone, and I'm not paying attention to anyone, and I'm asleep, and I'll let them run past me. He didn't have a balance of sort of sometimes pressing someone, sometimes being a bit more passive, but always being awake. He just wasn't that. He was asleep half the time, so we give him a 6 out of 10. Now the goat is here. Flinny Downs. Flinny Esther, as people say. 9 out of 10. I mean, borderline 10 out of 10, but he did get injured, which sucks. If he had played every game, would have won the league. Um, 9 out of 10, unbelievable. Genuinely unbelievable. Without him, we are shit. We are a, a shadow of the team without him. Um, obviously, he's a signing uh, on loan. Have to sign him, but obviously, football is football. Sometimes it doesn't happen. But 9 out of 10, I mean, I don't really need to talk about him because I think we all agree. that I don't think there's one Southampton fan that would go, from Downs, overrated. I don't think there's one person that would say that because he was absolutely crucial to the team. And again, in, in the playoffs, he was excellent again. It, like... For some reason, our defensive mid is like one of the best at traveling with the ball forward. How does that happen? The next Shay Charles, um, obviously a young player, first season in sort of the, the professional, um, obviously was a youth player before. He's got potential, obviously, but for me, not a good season um, in terms of his performances. Obviously, he's young. It's good to get experience. It's good to sort of get that understanding, that first step into um senior football you could say but he just isn't that great the main problem he has and, and, and if you compare him to downs which you have to because they're in the same position when that sort of comes to passing and all that sort of stuff it's you know he's he's good enough for the job but the main issue that i see with shay charles is his transition is shocking when we lose the ball he's nowhere to be seen <laughs> he is not anywhere to be seen defensively. I mean, there's many games where I can't I can't remember the exact game, but I can remember the situation. I remember we lose the ball. I think it was in the right back area or something on the right hand side, and they counter us and score. And Shay Charles is the furthest forward of the three midfielders. And you're thinking, brother in Christ, you're the defensive mid. Why are you higher than everyone? Right? It's those sort of things in the transition, not being proactive to see the danger. And that's where Downs is excellent. How many sweeping jobs has Down do Downs done? When he's just sort of cleaned up a loose pass. He's cleaned up on the transition instantly. We lose the ball, boom, he's in there. He's ready to tackle. He's ready to challenge someone for the ball. And that's what makes Downs so bloody good, is that he's so proactive in the transitions. Charles, on the other hand, it's like he doesn't even know the transition exists, right? He's like, oh, we lost the ball. Damn it. You should probably go run back and defend. You probably should have already been there <laughs> before we lost the ball. But it is what it is. He's a young player, and he'll get better as time goes on. So 6 out of 10, he didn't have a shit season. It was just more when he was needed, when Downs was injured or whatever, he just didn't do the role good enough for my liking. Now, Joseph Aribo, the Nigerian king. Um, first half of the season, didn't really get involved, didn't really do much. Um, second half of the season, a monster, a beast. Absolutely brilliant in the second half of the season. Some games, he absolutely was crucial to basically dominating the game. His physicality is brilliant. His ball control under pressure is brilliant. His odd up plays excellent, and he was brilliant. 7 out of 10, class, loved it. And that's sort of the player we signed. He disappeared a little bit in the Premier League season, which isn't really his fault because we were asked. But second half of the season, bloody good. Smallbone, the local lad. Um, 7 out of 10 again, just good. Just simply good. And the playoffs is excellent as well. Um, obviously scoring that beautiful goal against West Brom. He got unfair criticism, like some of these players as well. He's playing defensive mid some games and people are shitting on him like he shouldn't play. It's like he's not even playing his role. Like he is not a defensive mid if you'd figured that out yet. He's simply sort of a dictator, box to box. He can do a bit of both. Um, he's obviously scored some goals, some crucial goals this season. He's just a good player with the ball at his feet. I mean, his passes are pretty crisp typically. His touches are pretty good typically as well. He's just had a good season and we'll see him in the Premier League. Stuart Armstrong, he gets a 7.5. Just a little little bit better just because he had major impact in a lot of games. Obviously, his consistency wasn't brilliant. He wasn't dropping everyone, you know, every single week, just cooking people. He had his games where he was just excellent. And then he had games where he was sort of okay, right? But he gets a 7.5 just because he is he was that crucial link between midfield and attack. We had a lot of games this season where we just struggled without him. We struggled for that ball into Stewart and he just turns and goes or he finds the pass. We struggled without him in some games, and it was a little bit concerning when he got injured, thinking, ah, shit, our season's done. But uh, the rest of the midfield stepped up, which is bloody good. Moving on to lone man Joe Rothwell. Uh, 6 out of 10, just did okay. I mean, 
He scored some crucial goals, which is fair to him, and he probably scored the goal of the season for a majority of people. For me, definitely, uh, that goal against Huddersfield was ridiculous. One of the best goals I've seen. But other than that, he had no real impact, honestly. Um, the only games he started, he was dropping stinkers. Yeah, he was just... I mean, I gave him a 6 out of 10 just because he did score some really crucial goals, but other than that, he did nothing. Suli Sulimana. It's a 4 out of 10 for me, fella. Again, I talked a little bit about this. He has potential. He obviously could be good one day, but Christ, it's, it's a little bit of a mix. Didn't get as much game time as I would have thought he would have had to really make an impact. And then when he was on the pitch, he wasn't exactly... <laughs> He wasn't exactly brilliant, was he? Yeah, he didn't even score a goal. Like, even Mara scored a few goals, right? Suli didn't even score a goal. Um, yeah, 4 out of 10, sell him. I'll talk about Travis later, but sell him. I mean, we could probably get a good chunk of change from him. Um, he's still young, he's still got potential, but... If you can't do it in the championship, you ain't doing it in the Prem, fella. Uh, Dozy, 6 out of 10. I think the reason it's a 6 out of 10 is purely because of game time. I mean, he deserved more game time. He, he really did. I mean, he had a good period at the start of the season where he was scoring some goals... And then he just sort of disappeared from the team. And then sort of just had the odd cameo here and there, and that was it. So really, I think he deserved more game time. That's all I've got to say. Because he didn't really, I wouldn't say he had a bad season. I wouldn't say he did badly. He just didn't play enough. Fraser, the next one, another lone player. I give him a 7 out of 10. Maybe a bit biased from the playoffs because he's excellent in the playoffs. But in reality, Fraser had a good start. First half of the season was good. Second half of the season fell off when the team fell off. And then when it came to the playoffs, it was excellent. So it's sort of like he had a good, bad, good, give him a 7 out of 10. Um, yeah, we'll talk about his future later. Uh, David Brooks giving a 6 out of 10. I think he just, he has that touch. He has that quality. He is a good player, but I just didn't see enough of it. Um... For the game time he got. I mean, those he should have played more than Brooks, in my opinion. I think, especially in that sort of last 10 games of the season where we started to just wobble a lot. He was getting starts he didn't deserve. I felt like a dozy deserved something in those sort of games. He has the quality. He's obviously a good player. He's obviously got the technical ability, but he just, some games just looked off it. Sluggish. Wasn't really sharp. Yeah. So that's why I've given him a 6. Che Adams, his last game for the club in the playoff final. 7 out of 10, mostly because he missed a lot of sitters. <laughs> that's basically why he's, he's been knocked down from an 8. But he's crucial to the build-up. I mean, if Che Adams could just shoot from 6 yards and score a 1v1, he'd be... He'd be so good. He just would be. His build-up play is excellent. When he drops in, when he holds the ball up, he's class. But when you put him in a final third where he has to score, sometimes it's tragic. I mean, Jesus Christ. There is the one downfall of Chatham's. His finishing's awful. Uh, but everything else is good. It's a shame that he just can't shoot sometimes from six yards or with a sitter, but it is what it is. So he gets a 7 out of 10. And I know people want, like, you know, just sign, sign, re-sign him, re-sign him, please sign him, now they were promoted. It's just like, nah, we need new. We need new. We cannot just trust Adams again. There's, a, I mean, you could argue that some of the reason that we didn't get automatic promotion was because Adams did not score the sitters. I mean, it's Cardiff, he should have scored two. Against Middlesbrough, he should have scored one. That's four points, or oh, five points already. It would be on 92 points, it would be two points off Leicester. Not Leicester, Ipswich. You know, like those are the sort of differences and Chatham's just did not take his chances. But he still had a successful season overall and he was crucial to the team. So 7 out of 10. Adam Armstrong, 9 out of 10. He did go missing some games. I mean, he can't play centrally. I think we all figured that out pretty quickly. He just doesn't have the physical presence to manage that. But in reality, he got well, like 37 goals and assists in the season. <laughs> if I didn't give him a 9, it'd be a disgrace, really. I mean, a lot of the time how I will rate a player is just sort of off. You know, it's the eye test. You know, you're watching him play. Some games good, some games not. You're thinking, ah. But in reality, I don't like to just go off goals and assists. Oh, he's got good goals and assists. He's bloody good. You know, that's just sort of disingenuous to the whole game because there's a lot of a lot more to football than just assisting someone or scoring a goal. And Adams, Adam Armstrong, sorry, not Adams, um, definitely had some games where he ghosted completely, didn't really have an impact. But when you get 37 goals and assists, you've had a good season. You just have. Um, I can't fault that. And I mean, the reason we get promoted is because he scored the goal against Leeds. If we didn't score that, we may not go up. So you got to give credit where credit's due. And the last bloke, Super Secu. I love him. You know, <laughs> I love him with my whole heart. But uh, 5 out of 10. Was tempting on a 4, but then I put Suleiman a 4. And I was like, well, Mara is better than Suli. So we'll give him a 5. Um, hmm. What to say about Mara? I mean, I'm not in, inside the club. I don't bloody watch the trainings. I don't see how the player's body language is. But Christ on a cracker. 
Mara looks like he doesn't give a shit 24-7. I'm sorry, but he looks like he has no interest even being there. Again, he has talent, but it's just like, we did not see it. I mean, this was the time to sort of prove yourself. It's the championship. You go down a level. You can sort of go, okay, get a lot of game time under your belt, get some goals, and start to put in some good performances. But he never did. I mean, there's a reason he started like three games this season. Ross Stewart's been injured all season, right, basically. Adams has had a good fair chunk out injured. And Mara still didn't start. <laughs> what does that say? You know, like, Jesus Christ. Um, but Super Seku, I love him. He's a great bloke. But I think th there's two, oh, we'll talk about translator, but I think there's two options for him is either loan him out, maybe back to France, get him, get him some comfort, get him some confidence, or just sell him. I mean, those are your two options because he ain't staying here next season, I can guarantee you that. And now honorable mentions, um, Amoa Mayu went missing. Um, started well, had some promise. Um, definitely had a good impact in some games. Definitely beat a few players, but he just disappeared, which is weird because if you think about our wingers, right? You got Suleiman who did nothing. You got a Dozy who probably didn't get enough game time. You got Brooks who sort of got too much game time for what he was producing. Fraser had a really bad period in three or four months uh, in the second half of the uh, in the in the season. Well, maybe could have slipped in for a game or two. He could have had an impact here just to give him a go. But I mean, Russell Martin must have seen something that we didn't. Um, but he's got good potential, so hopefully in the future he gets more game time. Ross Stewart as well. Obviously, have to mention him. Obviously, there's no point giving a rating because he had no impact because of injuries. I mean, we can't blame him for that. It is what it is. But I mean, I haven't seen enough of him to to make a claim to say, oh yeah, he'll be class. So let's just hope he stays fit next season. We can see a bit more of him and see how he goes. Um, but that is the squad rating. I mean, there's Larios as well, but he didn't play a game, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, Alcaraz. I guess I can do Alcaraz. I forgot about him, actually. Six. He was just average. He can't play in... He can only play as a 10. He can only play in a role that is risk-free. He can play risky passes, do risky maneuvers, like in the final third. It doesn't really matter as much because of the creativity he has, whatever. But Christ, when he plays cinema in that four of the back system, dreadful. Dread, dreadful. I was fine when he left on loan. I was like, just go. I mean, Christ, you're just not fitting this team. And he's not, I hope he leaves. We'll talk about transfers soon, but I hope he goes. All right, let's talk transfers. Let's go, let's go. This will be the last segment. Um, it's already been like for half an hour. I mean, how do I speak for this long? So I checked after, I checked and it was seven minutes and I was like, okay. And now it's 30. Brilliant. Okay, so transfers. Um, there's a few rumors and whatnot, but we're going to talk about the loan players first. Obviously, Harwood signed permanently, sweet as. Fraser, um, obviously, we're linked with him. I did see a couple of stuff that he may be coming for three, which is brilliant. I'll take that. But for me, Fraser, um, good squad player, good work ethic as well. Very hard worker, which we saw when he played wing back in the final few games of the season. I would not pay much for him. Maximum of five, and that's pushing it. Maximum of five mil, and that's pushing it. Um, obviously, it would depend on Newcastle one and the wages, of course. But as a squad player, he'd be, he'd be fine. I mean, I'd happy to have him. Um, Rothwell, no, not interested. Brooks, I mean, I don't think we could sign him anyway. So it'd be a no anyway. Um, not interested. And then obviously the main one, Flynn Downs. Do what you can. I mean, we don't have the massive pull of a bigger club, but it really depends on what West Ham do. Obviously, a new manager comes in. He's probably going to want to gonna have a look. Want to going to have? Yeah, okay, I've been speaking for too long. He's probably going to want to have a look at Flynn Downs in the preseason, which makes it a bit more difficult for us to get the deal over the line. But, you know, I'm sure Russell Martin is all of us and is desperate to sign him, which is completely understood. What is that English? Jesus. Um, it's completely understood um, because he was brilliant. He was absolutely crucial to the team. I hope he signs. I hope he stays because we're going to have a difficult time replacing him. But he was in a fantastic loan deal. Great, great signing. <laughs> Excellent signing. But in terms of the other rumours, uh, the Lana... Adam, um, obviously he didn't leave the club with uh, a standing ovation, that is for sure. But again, for me, it's like when it comes to free transfers, it doesn't matter. Like as long as we're not paying 150k a week or something outrageous, I'm sure it won't be anything too crazy in terms of wage. But for me, Adam Lalana, he's decent. I mean, he could do a role in the team. I have no issue with signing him on a three if he's on like 40k, 50k, that's fine. I mean, he has a lot of experience that could help some of the younger players as well. But yeah, I mean, I haven't really watched much of him play. I know he's at Bright. And I didn't really watch him play all that much, especially this season, of course, because he got relegated. So I wasn't really watching the Premier League that often. But I mean, I think he's a fine signing. I don't have any issue with signing Alana as long as his wage isn't too ridiculous and it's all good with me. 
Now for the last bit for transfers, obviously we have a lot of loan players out at the moment. We'll go through them and say if I want them to stay, sell or whatnot. Um, Liz the Keeper, who plays for... Oh, he plays for Gots. Isn't that a, like affiliated club or something? Um, he plays for them. Don't care about him. Um, he's not going to have an impact anyway. Bianco. I mean, I've heard some people say they want him back. Get, get tested at the doctor, please, because you are... You have got something wrong with your brain. No way in hell do I want the Yanko. Is the Yanko better than Harwood? No. Is Yanko better than Bedrack? No. Is how uh, is um Lianko better than Stevens? No. Is Yanko better than Balakochap? No. Why would we keep him? Why would we keep him? There's no point. Moving on. Pass off. Roman Perot. Should we keep him? No. Sell him. He's like Manning. Exactly like Manning. Just no balance to his game, incredibly aggressive, or just asleep. No, I do not want him. I do not want... These sort of players were shocking in the previous season. They didn't even bother to stay in the championship with us. They jumped ship. I mean, Perot's got no potential. lianco has got no potential. 25-26. No, sell them, get a new left back. Keltakar. I don't know whether he's actually, like, got a deal going, uh, but get rid of him anyway. Big pull. Bye. They're not interested. Uh, Carlos Alcaraz already talked a little bit about it. Buy, not interested. Don't get a loan deal. Sell him. Um, I don't think he fits the team. I don't think he deserves to be here. I just don't think he's good enough, to be honest. And we're not going to play a role for him, really. We're not going to play a number 10. Well, unless Russ Martin has a different idea. But I don't think um, he's good enough. And Juventus are loaning him, just taking the piss out of us. Uh, sell him. Bella Kotchap. Now, he is the only one I'd be willing to keep. Um, obviously, I don't know the ins and outs behind the scenes, but obviously, he left alone to PSV. Um, I don't think he's done much there. I've got the little website up here. He's made four appearances. <laughs> um, he's made four appearances in the league, two in the Champions League. So, it looks like he got a majority of the season with an injury to his shoulder, which is exactly what happened at Southampton. And then was just on the bench for a majority of the season. So it looks like his loan move has been shockingly bad. But I would still give him a go if he was willing to work hard and stay. I mean, in, in, in a free of the back system like we had, Balakochev could do quite well. I think he's got potential. I think he was brilliant in the first sort of few months when he joined. And then the whole team sort of fell off. But I would keep him. He'd be the only player out on loan that I would potentially keep. But obviously, he's only played four or six games last season. So it's not exactly like he's <laughs> in form and sharp and fit to play. So it really depends. Oh, he played nine because he played some cup games. Nine games. Um, that's not exactly seen the world alight, but... He would be the only player I would potentially keep. But again, I could easily see him leaving. So that is the video. A long video. Too long for my liking, but it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts um, about, you know, your uh, play ratings. What you would give players, whether you think mine is shit or whether you think mine is decent. What you would change. Uh, what your opinions are about Russell Martin. And how excited are we to be back in the Premier League. Back to watch quality football. Maybe not from us, but from the opposition. But hopefully we can stay up. Um, that all depends on the transfers because there needs to be some people gone. Um, I may make a video, if you guys want to see it, where I go through the team and basically say who should go, who should stay, and then sort of look at positions that we should sign. I'm not going to suggest we sign any players because there's not been a player for about six years that I've known about <laughs> that has moved to us. So, yeah, I've got no clue who will sign. Um, hopefully some good players, but it is what it is. Hope you all enjoyed. Like, subscribe if you did, and I'll see you boys in another video next season. Um, potentially, will be previews and reviews before every game and after every game. In the Premier League, it's a lot easier for me to do them because I watch more Premier League than I do uh, Championship, of course. And have more, un um, I have more knowledge of the Premier League as well. So it'll be those. In terms of watch longs and all that, I may not be able to do them. It depends what happens. Obviously, they're at shit times and life changes quickly. So we'll see what happens with that. But we'll see you all next season. And I'll make some more videos. Probably talk about some transfers later on down the track. But I hope you all enjoyed. And I'll see you boys in another video.